Lee Harvey Oswald act alone in the JFK assassination? <laughs> I don't know, but you know, I actually had drinks one evening with the guy who jumped on the back of the limousine after Kennedy was shot. Clint Hill. Yeah. Yeah. How was that? That was amazing. It was one of the most fascinating nights of my life. So, but he you, has no theory. And, you know, he just thinks it was Oswald, which I get. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, Oswald was a marksman and a veteran, and he could handle a weapon. So, wait, walk, how did you meet Clint Hill? How'd that happen? Well, a friend of mine, uh, Vince DiPerzio, uh, is a documentarian, documentary arian a maker, <laughs> a doc <laughs> one of those guys. And uh, he did, um, he went back with the six remaining Secret Service guys who were on the Kennedy detail mm -hmm. that day. And uh, they were they were doing a book called The Kennedy Detail. And uh, Vince uh, interviewed him and he became friends with Clint. And then Clint was out here in California uh, in Los Angeles. And Vince was, you know, having a couple drinks with him and invited me over. So. All it right. So cool. let's let's op let's rip this one wide. Open. First of all, I think Clint Hill, if memory serves, he was actually with Eisenhower and he wanted the Kennedy presidential detail, but got mrs kennedy he they assigned him to jackie kennedy oh yeah yeah but that put him on the ground for dallas right but so you you walk into a room and there's clint hill i mean that guy you know what's amazing about this my daughter pointed this out too is somebody was fortunate enough look this it's a day of misfortunes right but somebody shot that you know the Zapruder film yeah yeah. And kept filming despite the gunfire, like didn't drop it. So it angled up at the sky or run or. Oh, yeah. I never thought jump of that. For, jump for cover. This guy maintained it, to the best of his ability, you know, his eyes on the target more or less and filmed it. And that and it became really the only film. Isn't it the only film we actually have of the incident? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So props to so. So Clint, you walk into the room and there's Clint Hill and Clint Hill obviously was, you know, involved in one of the most traumatic historical moments, not just for himself, but for the entire United States, if not the world. Right. World, he gets yeah. on. He witnesses it. He gets on the car. And what do you how does Russ Woody? Does he tell you he's a big Murphy Brown fan or a big uh, Drew Carey <laughs> fan? Because those, uh, no, he didn't does he know what you worked on. No, no, right. no. It's just I just sat there with just, you know, a gape. I mean, I, I'm old enough to remember that day. I was in the second grade mm -hmm. and I remember they, you know, they announced it over the loudspeaker and we all went home for the day. And here's this guy who was in the center of that, right, right. Smack in the center of so much of history because he because he talked about Eisenhower and Kennedy and, you know, they each had their own style of golfing and and I think it was uh, Kennedy who's uh, when he played golf, he swerved to the right or to the left, you know, on a on a on a tee off. And so whatever it was, if he swerved to the to the to the right, all the Secret Service guys knew to get on the left hand side when he was about to tee off. And, you know, little stuff like that. But he also talked about the. Uh, you know, the uh, Kennedy shooting and he just instinctually ran after the car and jumped up there, you know, and and a lot of speculation as to what Jackie was doing. And, you know, she wasn't trying to get out of the car. She was just trying to get little pieces of his skull and stuff, because, you know, you're just yeah. I mean, I, I can't imagine you just you're just not you're thinking whatever you're thinking. And that's the only thing she could think to do. And so he pulled her back into the car and he took one look and he knew that Kennedy was gone. And uh, she kept Kennedy, his head in her lap, and she just kept brushing the side of his, where he still had his hair and saying, Jack, what did they do to you? What did they do? And uh, it was really interesting. He said when they pulled into Parkland, she wouldn't get out of the car and he finally realized that she didn't want to if she got out of the car he would just slump down and be laying in the back seat uh and so 
Clint took off his jacket and put it over Kennedy's head and then helped Jackie out of the car. And then he was with her for three, the next three days, nonstop. And I don't think he went to bed for like two days, two or three days. And then he said, he said, oh, so much of this evening was fascinating. But he said, uh, he said, when Kennedy's body was in the rotunda, uh, Jackie came to Clint and Jackie and Bobby Kennedy came to Clint and said, uh, we want to... Um, see the body one more time. And so he, you know, was obviously well guarded, but he took both Jackie and Bobby into the rotunda. They opened the casket and she clipped a little piece of hair off of his head. And can you, I mean, there was no, no bigger center of the universe than right there where he was standing. Your road to redemption is paved with tombstones. No quarter, kill all masters. Go to no quarter, killallmasters.com. Rated R.